As Dawson mentioned, this morning's reading is the 23rd Psalm, or Psalm 23, which is arguably the most famous passage in the Bible. And on normally here in our church, we read our scriptures from the New Revised Standard Version translation, but today we'll be hearing the King James Version. And if you want to follow along, you're welcome to do so as the text is printed in your bulletins. So may we hear these ancient words with fresh ears. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The Reverend Dr. David M. Greenhaw is known throughout the United Church of Christ and beyond as a gifted educator, leader, and pastor. I'm fortunate, as I mentioned earlier, to have known David for many years, going back to my days in Dallas when he came to preach and to represent Eden Seminary, and to bring greetings from that seminary to my congregation, we struck an immediate friendship and have remained so since then. So I was thrilled when the leadership informed me that they had recruited and that David had agreed to serve as the interim senior minister following my departure next week. And our friendship has grown and my respect for David continues to grow as he and I have worked closely together over the last several weeks to continue in a smooth transition. Some of you may remember that on the penultimate Sunday before Reverend Dr. Ron Patterson's retirement, during his sermon that day, he removed his stole and gave it to me asking me to care and guard the life of this great church as he retired and asked you to care for me as your pastor. And so today I ask the same things of David as he prepares to become your interim for the next year during the search for the next settled and called senior minister. And so as he prepares to preach this morning, I want to ask him to come and to receive this stole on behalf of the congregation. And it is my hope, it is my prayer that you will love and be loved by this church, that you will guide and guard and protect them in the year ahead, and that you will have as much fun as I have had because indeed this is a great church with a bright future, and may God always be with you in these days ahead. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Don. It's pretty, isn't it? I like it. Uh, I'm going to use it on high holy days. It's red. That's what you do at Pentecost and big church events. And I'm going to pass it on after the end of the interim to the next senior minister of this congregation. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm tempted to make you just sit and relax and let me bring you a thousand greetings from all the communities that I have been around and who want to bring you greetings. 
but I'm only going to bring one today. Uh, we'll do more later, all right? So, uh, but I want to especially bring you greetings today from First Congregational United Church of Christ of St. Louis. That's the congregation where my wife, Lee, and I are members. And uh, we uh, were just there last Sunday. Uh, I, I, I'm not the regular preacher, but uh, we had a special service with uh, long-range planning and laying the groundwork for a capital campaign and all sorts of things. And then uh, we took off right after that and came here. But while we were there, the church, uh, the church sent us. And uh, they, at the end of the service, the whole congregation gathered around a big circle around the, the pews, and they prayed for us to come here and to bring greetings to you. I, I have this old-fashioned sense of uh, church life. You know how we say we belong to that congregation? You know, I, I belong over there, uh, I belong there. I, I actually think I belong to a church, and I belong to First Congregational United Church of Christ in St. Louis, and they have lent me to you for a year uh, to do this interim. So I'm delighted to be here, and they sent us off and are going to have to do their own capital campaign. <laughs> so... Uh, when I was in first grade, I had a teacher named Miss Ward. Miss Ward had eyes in the back of her head. When I was in school, uh, in kindergarten, you had tables and play areas and all, but in first grade, you got a desk. You got your own desk. And it was a wooden desk, at least on top. And it was like this pulpit. It was kind of sloping with a flat spot here and a piano hinge that ran right across the top. And you could lift it up and put things inside and then lower it back down. Or you could lift it up and let go and bam, it was slammed just like a toilet seat, just like that. Miss Ward was at the chalkboard. She was writing at the chalkboard and without even a moment's hesitation, she said, Jimmy... Lower the lid on your desk quietly so it doesn't disrupt the class. How did she know? Eyes in the back of her head, that's how. That woman knew everything that was going on in that classroom all the time. You know, she was, uh, she was not 100 pounds soaking wet. And if she were on her tiptoes, she still couldn't be five feet tall. Now, I'm going to just take a break because uh, I, I'm going to be with you all for a while and I want you to know that I'm tall. <laughs> You're skeptical. No, no, I, I, I am tall. I am the average height of the American male in 1848. <laughs> just born in the wrong century. Oh, back to Miss Ward. Uh, Miss Ward... Miss Ward never raised her voice. She just, she just had a gentle way about her. She not only knew when we were up to mischief, she knew when we were having trouble with our work. She knew when our feelings were hurt. She, she just was very attentive to us. She, she paid attention to us. She monitored us and cared for us. She had rules. We followed them. She, she had a way about her that organized that class, and it made it such a comfort to us. The psalm for today has a, has a central theme about comfort. Comfort right there in the psalm. You know, you heard that this psalm is a King James Version is what we read today, and I want to tell you that I like the King James Version. I think it's a great version and one of the best translations you could get in the 17th century. But we've improved on a few things since, and we know some things, and unless you speak daily in uh, Shakespearean English, uh, it's sometimes awkward. But for this psalm, it's just perfect. It is a translation, though. All of every psalm you've ever read is a translation, unless you read in Hebrew, because the psalms 
are originally in Hebrew. And the Hebrew word for comfort, that word is nacham, nacham. And it, it's correctly translated as comfort, but it could also be translated and is translated as change of heart, of, of having pity, of being formed in a way that the pain of another causes you pain. To be sorrowful, not in regret, but in feeling sorrow with someone else. That, that sense of comfort to be affected by the other. That's right there in this psalm. And what is it that we're to be comforted from, you remember? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy, and thy staff, they comfort me. It's pretty powerful language. I, I don't know how you think of death, but valley is a pretty strong way to say it, it seems to me. There are peaks and valleys in life, and death is certainly a valley. It's a hard thing. Our own death, the death of those we love, death is difficult, grievous, painful. And then it says that there is the shadow of death, the valley of the shadow of death. Death is not only its own pain, but it's the shadow it casts before that ominous time when it approaches and the long shadow it casts after. After someone you know and love dies, the shadow of their death stays with you. It reaches out. Just this week, I felt the shadow of my own mother's death. My mother died 10 or 11 years ago. Unexpectedly, actually, at least to me, it was hard. It was a valley. But the shadow has gone on because here's the thing. Every time I've ever done anything in my life, my mother was there for it. And if she wasn't, I'd call her and tell her about it, and she'd stitch together how I got from here to there. She knew my story from beginning up until the present moment. And this week, I moved from St. Louis to come to a new city and a new job, and what I wanted to do was to pick up the phone and call my mom and tell her. But I couldn't, because the shadow of death has reached this far. It's not terrible. I wasn't broken up about it awfully. But I find this comfort word just right. That is, when we experience grief, when we experience loss, when we encounter death ourselves or with those we love, when we encounter it, it is comforting when one knows that it's happening. No, let me say that differently. It is comforting when God, who is the creator of the ends of the earth, knows what's going on with you. God has eyes in the back of God's head. God sees and attends it's no wonder we know this psalm at every funeral I've nearly been to because it is a comfort in a hard season. The psalm is an interesting psalm. Psalms themselves have, have context, you know. Lots of things in the Bible have a context, a date. It took place at this time. There was a balm in Gilead, a place, a location, a, a particular region, a city, or in the year that King Uzziah died, such and such a happened. There's references in the, in the scripture to time and place. This one has no time and place reference. It doesn't say, the Lord is my shepherd in ancient Israel. It doesn't say, the Lord is my shepherd on, uh, on the season from December to May. It doesn't say that. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. And because it is disconnected from location, it's able to reconnect to all of our locations. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It's why this psalm has been memorized by so many people. I saw some of you moving your lips to it as it was being read there today. The psalm is connects to us. And it's got such wonderful images, doesn't it? I, I like the one about a head being anointed with oil. I find that a little creepy, you know. Oil running down my head, running, running down. But, but what's creepy about it is I kind of like to be in control. But when you're out of control, it's all right to be out of control, to just let it come down and just drip all the way down. It just takes over. The oil just anoints you and drips down. Or a cup overflowing. That's the worst thing. I've got to mop it up. No, I want to control it. But no, let that cup go. Let it pour and pour and just spill over. Spill over in this most remarkable way. God's incredible care for us. God's knowing who we are. God's seeing us. is isn't containable. It is explosive and over, overflowing. What an image. My cup runneth over. My head is anointed with oil. So it's Mother's Day. I have some advice for you. If your mother is living and you're not with her today, pick up the phone and call her. You never call, can call your mother too much. Uh, I know that because I'm married to a mother and... Uh, and we love getting calls from our kids. My mother was a little weird about it because she knew that it cost money to make phone calls, so she'd take a three-minute egg timer and she'd set it, and, you know. Oh, David, David, time's running out. Call again next week. You know, so, uh, but call your mother. And if your mother's not living, then remember that the shadow of death stretches, but so does that powerful love. And finally, I want you to do this. I want you to take it upon yourself, if you've not yet done it, to do what I've been working on doing myself, which is to memorize this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... He leads me into green pastures. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He prepare a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. He anointeth my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Forever.